I think I'm one of the youngest uh, full timers uh, in in pottery for sure. Most of the masters who are uh, in Singapore, they've had at least 20, 30 years of experience. I started when I was studying in Japan in 2010. Japan has quite a ceramic culture, so I thought, okay, maybe I should go and take up pottery, so that's what I did. And then um, I did it for over a year. After I came back from Japan, I uh, went to university, got a job, and then I started thinking, okay, actually I kind of miss doing something craft-related. If I were to die <laughs> tomorrow, you know, one of the biggest regrets would, would probably be not pursuing pottery, doing this as a serious career. So I decided to quit my job and also to take up a residency in Japan to further improve on my craft. The millennial mindset, I would say, is that people are a lot more result-oriented. They want quick results and they want to be good at it fast. At the start also, when I, when I was doing it in Japan, I had that mindset for sure. So the teacher would be like, no, you're not even good at this yet. You want to do something else? That's, that's not how we do things here. And, and I'll be like, oh, oh my God, I've been doing cups for three months and I've not done anything else. But I think the process of it kind of changed my mind because as you do, let's say, a different form, you face a new set of challenges like, okay, how can I make this more symmetrical? How can I make the shape more perfect. When you come and do pottery, the mindset has to be right. Okay, it's not going to be easy. Um, I'm going to try my best to get the foundation right and then think about what I want to do as a final product after. The start is often uh, either you do hand building or you do it on the wheel uh, to make the form of a shape that you want to do and then after that you leave it to dry, then trim the base and then uh, do a firing. The first firing, the piece becomes semi-hard so that's where you can add colours by glazing it and then you do a second firing to it. My signature is the word yen in Chinese but also in Japanese it's like gen uh, which means speech. I'm not good at expressing myself with words, so I find that my work is actually my speech. I wouldn't call myself a master, even if I feel that I'm very good at it. Even after maybe 20 or 30 years of doing something, you probably still be figuring out a lot of mistakes as you go. So I wouldn't be so sure I'll say that I would become a master, but I definitely want to be very good at it. I'm currently working with Iskandar Jalil, who is um, my mentor and inspiration. He's always teaching me a lot about the philosophy of clay itself. At the start, it's always, you know, I'm just experimenting and, and you know, whatever I want to do, I just do. And then he'll question me, he'll say like, you know, you have to think about why you're doing it this way. You know, what kind of form you're trying to make and how you can develop that into your own style. At the moment, I'm definitely trying my best to, to focus on what I want to make in the next collections. I would say that my work is definitely still changing um, and it will continue to change as I go. The only thing I would fear is to become stagnant. I don't want my work to always be the same. Sometimes I name my works with either boy or girl's names because I find like they really like my baby and to see that it came out without any flaw or it came out the way I wanted it or even better than it, it, it was supposed to be it makes me really really happy. When you look at the piece you get reminded of the amount of time you spent to doing it and how it came out for you and that's also a reflection of your attitude when you're doing that piece. 